Hey guys, welcome back. Marius here and today we have Timberborn and let's talk about dams because that's the most important part of the game and this will be full tutorial guide, everything you need to know how, what to do, okay? So, let's not waste time, let's jump into game and I'll show you quickly what we are talking about. This is, I have set up, but it is meant for everyone from the scratch, uh, the progress I have in the game has no impact whatsoever. The uh, guide about dams are the same. And just to show you what we will discuss today is something that you want water, obviously, but the problem is, for example, I'm showing this is the most advanced. It will be at the end of the video. I'll try to cover as well. Is one particular point where if you have uh, too much input of the water, Right? For example, here I have narrow space for my water wheel, which is great because as you can see, the speed is huge. It means they spin, uh, they don't slow down, but there might be a problems if we are uh, putting in too much water, which I'm not able to do as of, as of now. Okay, we'll have a night time. And here you have one, two, three, four, five. I have five open uh, floodgates, as you can see. But uh, through the amount that water can go through here is not that much. So that leads to the point where water is good, but too much water is not so great. And if I remember correctly, even set to this height will make a problem. So the main main thing that we are going to cover today is how to avoid and properly set everything you need for your perfect. Let me open just a little bit, two of them. I need two of them. That's the output we can handle. So while water is running and we need to cover basic principles right? Not every map is the same, not every map has such one straight river next to it or another river or yeah, don't look at that setup. So what we are going and I'm going to show you the tutorial because I realize not everyone has, I don't know, has been in physics class or I don't know, just skipped or whatever. So I hope maybe some younger audience also might find it useful. Maybe we'll jump ahead a little bit and you will have your insights in, in physics as well. Just a little bit. So for that, let me show you something. Yes, my absolutely amazing uh, paint skills. This is important. I'll go quickly through. So simply explaining what, what we will discuss today. So um, this, as you can see, this is basically ground. That's why it's covered in every of the pictures. So figure number one is... Uh, when you have water flowing in, we, we will take a look at volume. So if there is no blockade, water has particular um, direction from top to bottom. And obviously in, in a map, you will see it flows, it finds a way and flows without any problems. So far, so good? Yes. Next up, when you place, that's your option. When you place an object or, or a building or something that blocks the flow, it obviously the, the river keeps flowing, but what happens next is the water river rises. So far, everything is just basic thing. You know how it goes. So the water level goes up. And then in figure three, what we see, the question what we will be trying to find today is the amount of water and where it flows. Because if you place a solid object in front of water, the water level will flow until the height of that object and more. And this more is overflowing. This basically flood, that's what I showed you. That's the flood, basically. How much comes in, that much will go over the level of your object you put in. So not, not ideal scenario, but that's where we're uh, going for. So next up, the ideal situation what we are looking for is water figure number four water coming in water rising to the level or set level and 
if we can find a piece that has, let's say this is a hole where the water can flow through, right? Because we rem remember from figure three, uh, it will find the, the highest possible point and then will f uh, flood there. But it stays in a level where we need, like, we need some level above it and some specific level below it. So that's the that's the area where we want water flow to fluctuate, whatever, but it never reaches too high and never drops too low. And reason is simple why we want that. So if we have such an object in the game, which we have, that's what we want to put as a dam. That's the piece we want. And even better, figure number five, if such in a river, for example, uh, or wherever the water flows, if we place two of those objects where incoming has exactly the same effect, then as you can see, this is fl a flooding area. Basically, that's the reservoir, that's the dam effect. And then when it's too much water, it overflows. So we have livable area right here. Yeah, that, that's a beaver tail. Yeah. I'm not going to draw a beaver tail, okay, you get it. <laughs> yeah. uh, and that's where you can live. So you have no problems with f flooding your town and river flows through. And most importantly, figure number six is the ideal situation where, as you can see, when the dry season kicks in, there is no incoming water. Nothing comes in, nothing comes out, but until this 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 level this um, position we have a stored water and that's the thing we want to maximize this let's call it y so we have a huge amount of y the the, the reservoir then we have stable flow in and flow out and not flooding your uh, city and in the droughts moments, yeah, when the water flow resumes, then everything is fine. So this is the setup we will be working and applying basically everywhere. No matter of the structure, whatever um, buildings or, or yeah, the, the buildings you, you choose to use, this will be the setup. So in this example, I'll show you the basics principle and I have I tried at least set up everything so it replicates the main the main things main setup as a river. I'm demolishing everything so nothing distracts you and me and yeah, I have everything set up. No worries, guys. Uh, okay, I, I will need to leave this one part. They this um, path not path, platform, uh, doesn't block anything. It's, it's all the water goes through, so it's just purely for blocking. So what we have here is a river that is coming through. I blocked this one, so as you can see, water comes through. So the first example, if you remember, was if nothing happens, water keeps flowing in an ideal scenario. Let me simulate what happens when obviously there is a drought coming in and it will take some time. The water level decreases and, and obviously uh, all, the, all the land becomes infertile and it's bad. That's not what you want. All right. So yeah, it will take, I'm not, I'm not able to simulate drought as that easy as I figured. Eh, fine. We'll go with that. Instead, remember what we want to achieve is, let's take a look at Levy. I don't know how to pronounce it. So this will be the case if we build something like this. Uh, full blockade. Yeah. Now the drought, yeah. <laughs> drought simulation kicked in. Awesome. Okay. So if we build anything like this now I don't have now I don't have enough water to show you what will happen well I do have 
that's why I have speed up the game. Water comes in, then it reaches the blockade, then the water fills up. Yeah, the same scenario where everything is over flooding. No, 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 this is not how you build a dam. Because we don't have overflowing this, this. remember the rectangle where, where flood goes on uh, through. We have a dam that is called dam. And if you read the description, it says blocks water, but allows some water to pass through the spillway. Oh, that's the name I'm trying to find. Spillway at the top. So if we build something like this, that's why I have preset already and gathered the wood and everything. So what happens now is the water reaches the level, half of the, um, well, it should be at least, not at least, but half of the level. When the level is reached, the rest of that goes through. And you see above the level, everything is fine. This is a basic, a basic idea of dam itself. Another point was, I was in, in other video I mentioned, you could kind of uh, go with full dam um, setup. No blockade, no full blockade, so just, just this setup. So here I, I need you to pay attention what happens if you have such setup. And what we are looking at is, okay, even better. Let's set up the measurement. Should be built in a moment because uh, in this scenario, your water always, whenever it reaches as, uh, yeah, it's fluctuates all the time, damn it. Um, whenever it reaches half of the block, it overfloods. So basically you will always have a little bit above the, the, the average, I don't know, average at 0 0.5, 0 0.6. And those damn waves kick in. Why? Stop waving. Damn it. Trying to make a measurement here. Um, so, why? And again, it decreases and then again increases. So, the point is, whenever it uh, reaches the spillway, it automatically, in all four, five of those blocks, spills out the excess water, and that's it. As, as you can see, we'll, we'll try to get some me measurement, 0.78 something. And everything is at this moment about how much water comes in and how much water comes out of this. We this is the reservoir, the, basically this is the reservoir we are talking about. If all the drought kicks in, this will store at least half of the block height, the water. Yeah. 0.78 is what we can achieve. Instead, what we do instead is if we block, I even go with three of the blocks. Why? Because we know just you will figure this out in a moment. In a moment, uh, how much water is the input? And if you want to calculate your input in your map, same game, is you find basically how much water comes in beneath uh, these, these rocks, water source, they make uh, water. You count how much you have, but that's not that, that's not it. Then you need to find where it splits. For example, I have one here split. This is too high. And there's another, and there's another. So basically, you need to take in account that it not all the water goes in one way, so we have four splits, so everything. Anyways, the idea is currently I have specifically regulated this spot where only two of them pass through 0 0.5. So it means if I hill build here, not adjustable, but just pure uh, this, this um, dam setup, it should put in exactly the same amount as output. And even with the stupid fluctuation, as you can see, what we can achieve is a little bit higher levels. And the reason for that is 
um, you regulate. If a little bit more comes in than comes out, you are doomed to have a flood, basically. If you have too much, then there will be a huge flood. But if you make this just a little bit, you see, we have we will have 0 0.5. That's the height of the blockade, the dam, but everything else is blocked. So now I'm I'm risking with the flood, which yeah comes in. <laughs> but let's see if that fluctuation is the key or not. Ah, too much. Yeah, we can't allow to have. So you see, we have too much water coming in. There's no way this one 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 um, dam can put out as much water. So there's basically inevitable the the flooding. And you see, it's not going away. So yeah, something like uh, sorry, nah, two of them. And as soon as we deleted the block, you see, water output goes through easy as that. But even more, let me. Yeah, it's. I hope now there's drought not coming in, but fine. So one thing is building one such dam, which is cool. Another thing is input output. Uh, usually when you start the game, you don't have such setup. You have just general water coming in and you cannot control how much water goes in and goes out. That's why I suggested you need to control input and output, both of them. Uh, how to do that, especially at the beginning. Uh, first off, why I'm building here. What you want is find the furthest place actually okay if we be really honest then that would be this spot this is a perfect spot why because it gives me more this room and you can always place uh... so let's build two of them uh why, why this is better because you see we gained here extra space for this reservoir this is the input Remember in, from this, my ugly images, the input allows to pass to such dam, half of this uh, height, and here will be the same output. So absolutely controlled, perfect. And this, this little area is my reservoir. Uh, in my case, what's the benefit? Well, this map is really generous, is here I have, if you look, there is one gap that basically the what is called waterfall which means when the drought kicks in in two days um, the water will stop and it has a natural uh, this this income this income comes from the height then i have b fully blocked uh, one height and this hole can be this whole area what we are looking this water will be hold, held in place this will be the reservoir and only thing we are missing will be this top half, that over flooding area. In a moment, we will have um, dry season, and I hope I, I will be able to show you exactly what I mean by that. So this is the most basic setup. You need to have controlled input, controlled output, and everything in between will be your reservoir, right? Basic but the same principle what I applied is there. Um, let's go extra step further. Mm, 0 0.12. Uh, extra step forward is there's not actually much to it. Um, not quite sure. Next step is two, two things that is only to improve your uh, dam. One is having a bigger area here basically ho holding more water which means you will have you can withstand uh longer periods without water coming in in the moment we will experience it let me just blockade already input the water will find a way elsewhere hopefully the dry season kicks in so as you can see 
all the water that was too much went over the spill area and the rest of that this is the reservoir this is the and basically what i have here is split one reservoir here one reservoir here it's still flooding too much water yeah because i have control oh sorry yeah this this is the reason the water is nowhere to go <clears throat> it, ne it needs somewhere to flow so that's another thing about improving the dams, there's two options. I can show you in other areas how what I did, but basically one of them is instead of building these um, dams, which basically has one block, one block a bow and a half, uh, that's the height you can go all the time uh, if you want to hold more water, but it doesn't change, it, it, it's fixed. It's there, if there is, more or less water coming in, uh, you can change it. It's it's unchangeable, unless you uh, take a floodgate. So floodgate in our case here, it's one block height will be enough. Uh, one thing to note here: you don't replace them. You build next to it. Why? Because floodgates are the worst. Uh, beavers cannot go through them. They are a separate buildings. So in this case. I have exactly the same current setup, 1.5 1, 1. height, and you can adjust it. There's no difference whatsoever uh, currently. There are 1.5 1, 1. and 1.5, 1. they work exactly the same. Uh, and this, this part, obviously, if you want to water go through, which you want, then you build a platform that has no uh, blocking limitations whatsoever. So this is the advanced setup uh, to adjust the levels. And I can explain also why adjusting kind of makes sense. And as you can see in, in such way, we have a road over. And we have control over the water flow. Why you want to build this is, you see, uh, this is the limitation by this blockade. You could have twice as much water stored here, but you could not because it's over flooding. It's, it's the spillway puts the rest of the water out. So before, right before the drought kicks in, when the river was flowing, we can actually try to simulate that. Can we? Let's put a little bit water. What you could do is increase this level a little bit not a little bit but exactly fully blocking the um, right let's stop so okay a little bit too much so when you have a floodgate that you can fully block or half of that you see the possibility for you is to have full reservoir and this currently contains twice as much if you have this uh, basic setup. For the beginning, for the uh, begin beginning of the game up to mid to the game, it is fine to have not non-controllable uh, these areas. You don't lose much, well, half of it to be honest, but this is the one update you can go, as you can see, uh, this, this floodgate is quite cool. Uh, and the same, of course, works for the input. Input-output, when you can control, this is the best, kind of. But currently we are limited with, you see, the same amount. If I continue playing, drought season uh, becomes long, uh, longer, this might be not enough. In dry season, actually, it can uh, evaporate and be dry out. Then I run out of the food and, you know, all the problems. So second thing what you can do and you should do I will show you here. So you see naturally what I had. This was the water flow. Let's wait for the morning so you can see better. Come on, morning kicks in. Dry season is over as well. So uh, here, drought ended. Here, if you check the water, originally water level was where these blueberries and trees were growing. Now they are underwater. How and why? 
the same principle is applied. What I did is extended the depth of the reservoir. It was already deeper in here, but here I raised the, uh, the levy. I, I hate the name, I don't, I don't probably pronounce it wrong. And second, the same principle applied, where I have this overflowing area at the top. As you can see here, I store full height of the block. And then in the second level, I have set up. So this is, let me pause. This is what it means. Um, okay, fine. Uh, 1.5 height. One height, this would be one block. And then increasing 1.5, this is the uh, level I'm storing. So another upgrade for your default dam is having borders on the side which allows the water to flow higher than originally the river allows. The same, absolutely the same is true for uh, rest of the map, as you can see. Here you need to pay attention. Remember where I showed you at the beginning blockade where the, you stop the water and then uh, control the flow inflow as well. Keep that always in mind. Water needs to be trapped from all sides. You can't uh, just just build, for example, this 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 huge awesome uh, floodgate and dam. Sorry, let me increase 0 0.5, 0 0.5 everywhere in here and expect just things to work. I will, especially in this map, when the water reaches a level, when it go goes beyond full block, for example, here, you see uh, what initially happened is right away the water came from here, then overflowed this one level because I build blockades everywhere. And then immediately off the map, just overflowed, overflowed here. And that's it. Basically, water came out, flooding and then going away with all the water was wasted. So I had to go back. And this literally is uh, controlling the input. Uh, if you want, and th this map particularly is painful in, in that sense, I had to come over here and blockade these openings to the side of the map up to the level so I can trap the water. If you look around, every every blockade I have has the same setup, has the same height possible. And that you need to be aware of. You can't just build one blockade and say, that's fine. No, no. You need to check if from all sides water will be trapped. Right? And here, basically, this is one huge reservoir. It works as a reservoir. This 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 whole area. Then I have separated floodgates so I can control how much, adjust the height. Uh, this is one reservoir more. As you can see, this is not working. It's too much water input. Uh, and then there's next reservoir. Where it's way too much input. <laughs> And why? Because there is no output, right? You see, we, we forgot to open those two necessarily. So this is a potential problem you might have if too much coming in, uh, then output. And as you can see, this is not what you want. None of the buildings work. None of the resources can be gathered. None of the food can be taken. Nothing. Basically, it's, it's whole. It's kind of really bad position to be in. Well, let me see what we can do. First off, we can make some water flood over there. And keep in mind that the, the level height and all that, it takes time to kick in. The water is flowing. You see, we have all the time full speed and it seems it should be normal. It's all normalizing. Yeah, here's a little bit overflow. Fine.
something suck. Something's wrong here, and wrong is this syn synchronization. It, it's yeah, this is really bad blood uh, floodgate I'm having here. Now we have. <laughs> I wanted to say normalized, but yeah, not quite yet. Oh, you're right, because we have this one. We have totally forgot about this one. So there was no water flowing through. Now it should be normalized. So there's no much to it. All the rest of the game is trying to find the level you can flood. As you can see, if I put too much water in here, I am endangering all my town, which is not the case. I need either move them somewhere higher, basically flooding this whole area, or, as I said, another option, as I did elsewhere, would be going a little bit crazy and securing the sides so that gives me extra one level of the one height of the what it's called levy where i can store water that's another option that's obviously possible and you need to do that in both sides and and make sure there is no openings Obviously, this, that would not work. You need to trap the water from all the sides and make sure input and output matches. Uh, I think if I don't, I don't know. I'm. Uh, what else? What else am I missing? What else am I missing? One thing to, to mention: uh, these huge uh, original. I'm not quite sure if I can find. There is a basically a, a, a holes, right? A hole in the ground which you can fill up and the water stays there naturally uh, for example this one you see this one it's blocked here and here's another blockade so if we can put a water in here this will be stored in in, in this one uh, area uh, the problem with this is it's um when you're not especially controlling it um it's how to explain. It's hard to explain. Well, first off, this is easier to show. They are in specific areas. You need to then move your orb, all base of operations and, and food and everything growing over here if you want to exploit this uh, depth, right? Extra level. You can use dynamite as well to dig deeper, which is actually I'm mean, totally exploring. But that's at the late end of the game because you need metal, you need paper, you need gears, you need. Basically, whenever you have full uh, technology opened, then you can use um, where it's here the dynamites, and I actually can dig deeper, not build up. Well, I can do both. I can go one level up, one level below, which gives me this the same the same area, the three times the the water I can store, but exploring the dynamite would totally be out of this this part of the video because it's endgame I'm, and I'm not super fan to use anything that uses limited resources and this 30 um, iron blocks that is required you need to have metal scraps that are you need to collect these which are finite you you collect everything from the map. One, two, three, probably four, okay, five. It's a lot of metal, don't get me wrong, but uh, six. But I hate the idea that I'm using something that is finite. I'm just, I'm more of a renewable, renewable things. That I always been. So yeah, I mean, dynamite is fun. Dynamite is awesome building some new uh, river, uh, Gulfs or how it's called You see the path currently the map has everything already set, but I can do my own I can b b basically dig a water area here water flow and make here as well That's possible, but that's out of the uh, current scope Currently it will be enough if you build something like this To fully blockade and then to dams that allows enough water to flow through all right enough 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 
I think you should be able to build now your best awesome dams uh, just to show you how to deal with such situation, which will be the case. Remember, in, in final version, uh, your beavers are allowed to go through the water. So in this case, I absolutely can still leave this. Just I don't need to rebuild it. Uh, when and if the water will be fully uh, flooded here, this path will be underwater, but I don't care. Because beavers can still pass through it. Let me quickly show you how, how it will look like at the end. If we finalize this part, just this part, not going to waste much of your time. <clears throat> This to... Oh no, it will be fine. That's why I usually uh, such blockades use as a path. See? This would be my final kind of setup. Of course, it needs to be connected. I have prepared, of course, everything for you guys so I can show you. No, 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 wrong block. Something like this. And for example, here. Yep, yep. And uh, so I'll already the end of the video, so beavers, keep, keep working. Of course, this is not usable anymore. But you see, this setup is totally fine. I'm not quite sure I can. Okay, I'll try. I'll try. I'm just just because I'm fast and you're fast and everyone. Sh so let me demonstrate. <clears throat> Otherwise, I collected all the wood and built so much builder ha uh, for nothing. Final final piece of the puzzle will be showing you how to go gather twice as much water than I had before. The same flow in, the same area, the same path. Yeah, you lose a little bit because of the stairs. You need extra stairs. But look what we have now. Okay, a few beavers are lost. That's fine. Actually, it's not fine. When there are beavers lost, it's oh, it's such a pain because they can't find a way home. It's one thing. Another thing, when there's beaver, they cannot complete the buildings, which is so bad. These sleeping beavers basically are blocking uh, the finalization of this project I'm having here. Not a big fan. All right, beavers, wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. God damn it. Please, please, please. Finish. We need to finish because this is, yeah, the gap. Remember, trapping the water from all sides, every sides, no exceptions. So what we do have here, we just increased our, 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 but actually I have the measurement. Remember we had 0 0.78 when we had just the one block. Then we, with overflowing, which, which was too much, was 1.11. Now, naturally, without any issues, any problems, we have 0 0.7. So basically by one block, by one huge block, as you can see, one height of the block, we just increase the area of the and that that's that's the dam that is the dam and if you want to go beyond you can add another level but then you will have a problem you see trap next level of of this blockade yeah i can i can go here it's easy but at this side if we want to increase by one level i need to build a dam here 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 basically until up to the this cliff then it can be supported. Then we need to check. Yes, 
it can be trapped here. Yes, yes, we have everything prepared at that side. And at this side, we also need one level up. Oh, this we need to block. And then all this area needs to be blocked as well. Only then we can raise up by one level. Because this would mean there's a gap. And when level rises, it will start overflowed here. And it will never reach this full height of the next block. All right. That's how you build... And this is, look, it's pretty cool. We have two level of dams. We have one reservoir here and one reservoir here. With the extra water, basically stores. We had 0 0.7, now we have 1.7. What's the percentage? More than twice, that's, that's my point. More than twice, well, approximately twice as much. Water is now stored here. All right, enough. I'm closing the video. If you have questions, of course, feel free to ask. That's why we have comment section. Uh, this is just not needed. And uh, of course, I will try to answer and build more videos with what kind of questions you might have. We'll cover, of course. And so you have, so your beavers can thrive, all right? That's the most important part. And so you can have fun gaming. Alright guys, thanks for watching, we'll meet in other videos, cheers!